Welcome to the Animal Studies screencast. This screencast will cover lessons 8 through 11. In lesson 8, students get to meet the millipedes. They create the millipede habitat just as they did for the other two animals. It is important to note that students need to either bring leaf litter to class or they need to collect it beforehand because this is required for one of the layers of the habitat. And millipedes are decomposers, so they eat things that are decomposing in the soil. So this leaf litter, like old leaves, twigs, rocks, is very important in the habitat. After they create the habitat and introduce the millipedes into their habitat, they'll discuss the daily care, which is very easy for millipedes. Make sure to spray the habitat and keep it moist, and maybe add an slice of apple or two every couple weeks. After that, students will be able to make observations and record questions about the millipedes in their notebook. Don't forget to fill out the habitat information table. So you're going to add millipedes and you're going to discuss with the class the food, water, shelter, space, and arrangement of the habitat and add that to the class table. Now, for every unit I teach, I keep a what we learned wall up in the classroom. And every day, the last five minutes of the lesson, I ask students to share with me what they learned using the sentence starter, I learned. And we add to it over the course of the unit, and it serves as a great reference. Lesson nine, they get to observe the millipedes more closely and really see some of the millipede characteristics. Now I give students a plastic spoon to gently move the soil around to try to find the millipedes when they want to take them out to observe them. Now they won't be crawling around on top because they're nocturnal. They're active at night and they sleep during the day. So that's opposite of humans. And students can actually hold the millipedes. I know they look creepy crawly, but they don't bite and they're very gentle creatures. So they have some behaviors that they can do to help defend themselves. One is coil into the ball, like you see in the picture on the far right. And then they can also release a gas that is poisonous to certain predators. So at the end of lesson nine, after they do some more millipede observations, you're going to refer back to the triple Venn diagram, and you're going to start to discuss with students the things that are common throughout all of the habitats, and you're going to cross them out and put them in the middle of the Venn diagram. And there are some focus questions that will help you to have this conversation with your students. Lesson 10, how do the animals respond to a change in their habitat? This has got to be my favorite lesson in the entire animal studies unit. So you give them a few minutes to review their animal observation logs, and that way they can see what the different animals are doing at different times of the day. Then they discuss the non-living elements in the animal's habitat, and you want to guide that discussion towards light. Because in this lesson, students are going to plan and carry out their own experiments. So they're going to write the question, they're going to plan what to do with the materials, and they're going to carry out the investigation on what happens to the animal in the presence or absence of light. Now, I usually give two groups the fiddler crabs, two groups the millipedes, and two groups the African dwarf frogs. So we can talk about what each animal did during their investigation. And this also connects back to SCP number three, plan and carry out their own investigation. And the students are really doing the heavy lifting here. So at the end, we discuss what happened, and we add to our what I learned chart. Word walls. Word walls are something else that I keep up in the classroom over the course of the unit. And every single day, any new word that we learn, we add to the word wall. I found over time, the way you organize the word wall can help students to learn the information and use it in their writing. So I organized it into three columns. One about the fiddler crab, one about African dwarf frogs, and the last column about millipedes. And then I always have another section for other science words that maybe work for 
all of the animals, like behavior or structure. Lesson 11, this is where they observe humans more closely. So they keep a habitat about human observations at home and how they interact with their habitat. They also make observations about humans and how they interact with their habitat. At school, we did this at the beginning of the unit. You can make connections back to that. And then you could connect to how the animals interact with their habitat. And you're gonna add this information to the habitat information table. Lastly, if you have a class pet, this is a great opportunity to bring your class pet into the discussion and into the learning. So we had a guinea pig named Michael Jackson. I got him through a Pets in the Classroom grant and the kids actually named him. So we kept an observation chart next to Michael Jackson. Anytime a student observed a behavior, they could just go and write it on the observation chart that was next to his habitat. And that way, when we were sharing observations and comparing and contrasting how the different animals interact within their habitat, we could also bring Michael Jackson, the guinea pig, into that conversation. And it's always great to be able to observe something over a long period of time. So I hope you enjoy the millipedes, and we'll see you in the next screencast.